welcome back to the channel, fellas and ladies. Um, you know, one thing I've never mentioned in any of my videos, um, you know, I started off, if you go back to the first video on the Lodestar from way back two years ago, um, just about anyway, you know, I talk about, and I'm paraphrasing here, just trying to remember it, but I talk about not looking to, you know, do something crazy. I just want to have, you know, some place to show the progress on my projects and document. And I absolutely still agree with that 100%. I will say, though, it's kind of cool. Never thought it would get to the point, and, I, and you know, in the scheme of YouTube channels, this is like one one thousandth of a drop in the bucket, but to have over 400 subscribers is kind of cool. So, you know, and I, I don't want to I don't want to beat it to death. I don't want to talk about it in every video. But, you know, if you are watching this and you do enjoy it, then do hit that like button. I, you know, more traffic and movement and whatever else that happens is cool. So, you know, I, I don't know if it makes a difference in any of you guys watching. Maybe you're already liking and subscribed anyway. But if, if, if it's interesting to you, then then, uh, you know, like and subscribe. So, there, that's it. I'm gonna beat that to death. Thought I'd give you a little change of scenery today, boys. Uh, and believe it or not, this is actually, this is an entrance ramp onto I-69. Um, this is, this is two days after the storm. It's not really two days after the end of the storm about 36 hours after the end of the storm. But uh, we got, you know, snowmageddon. Uh, we actually did get about a foot. Uh, depends on the exact spot. But, uh, you know, central, central mid Michigan, southeast Michigan, all got somewhere between eight and 13 inches, so. Uh, so anyway, it's awful pretty morning. I can do without the snow on myself, but it's winter. I'm not going to change it, right? But back to the L9000. First order of business is going to be getting her up, blocked up, and I, I'm suspecting, the more I thought about it this week, that my sticky brake, I don't think it's in the linings and the drum, because I can get it to roll. It does move. I think we've got a uh, um, I think the, the tube for the S-cam shaft is somewhat seized up. I think there's some old nasty grease in there and some water and ice and God knows what else. Probably, you know, the S-cam seals and bushings and all that are bad. Um, so we're going to get in there, pull the wheel and tire off, and pull the grease zerk out. And with the brake caged so that it's trying to uh, to pull back on that slack adjuster. I'm gonna take the acetylene torches to it, and just lightly heat back and forth. See if we can heat up some of that grease and then I can visibly watch and see if the slack adjuster arm moves back and pulls the brakes off and that'll tell me if that's my issue or not. Um, so we're gonna start with that. Hopefully we can get that problem solved. Then we'll try dropping those U-bolts and getting that axle down, doing our bevel grind, um, welding up that cracked axle and then if we could have been able to reuse the u-bolts anyway we'll zip it back up and top it back off with fluid and see where we're at but that's the that's the ticket for this weekend and beyond that i'll probably maybe monkey with the i got a sticky um sticky throttle on it from when I did the, uh, the injection pump uh, tweaks and so I gotta, I gotta get that right and looking from underneath that thing the last few weeks but as I've been doing God dang bumpy roads filling my coffee now we're gonna hold that because that's causing a disaster with Exxon Valdez spill of coffee dang stupid city of Flint roads um but, uh, I forgot what I was even saying. Um, looking underneath that truck, 
thinking maybe I might be able to get that uh, the back housing on the injection pump for the fuel button off from underneath. I got a lot more access down there. So I might give that a try and try to get that number 15 fuel button in that PT pump and see if we can turn her up a little more. So, all right, guys, that's the game plan. When you come back, we'll be back in the barn uh, out of all this white stuff, not dealing with the snow, and uh, we'll see what we get done. All right, guys, well, um, did a little cleanup in the barn here, and then decided to try to tackle this locked up brake issue, and lo and behold, I left this brake chamber caged for the week, and I came out, and slack adjuster had moved. So, I don't know if it was an issue with the shoes and the drums, or with the, the S-cam, or what, but it unfroze. Um, uh, pulled the wheels, was able to get the, you know, the passenger side brake, the drum pulled right off. This side had a lip, um, so I had to back off the slack adjuster, but got this side off too. What I found was we've got some really pretty extreme wear on the tips of the, uh, um, that would be the cooling shoe there. Um, and that's on all four shoes. We're getting that. We're obviously thin too. I'm well, not thin, you know, but we're, Obviously, we're never gonna we're not gonna use these shoes, at least not on the road. So, um, this drum has some fairly significant. I don't know if you guys can see that. Some fairly significant, not significant, but it's got some heat checking. And then it's got. Let's see if I can find it. Um, sorry for the camera motion there. We've got a pretty distinct crack right through it too, and. Um, it's got a bunch of ridging in it, a bunch of debris, and a huge lip belled out. Um, the other side is not belled nearly as bad, but it too has a little bit. I mean, I can feel some pretty significant ridging in there, and I can, I mean, those are cracks I can feel like easily. So, um, nothing we want to use. You know, these shoes are seeing that same taper on the cooling shoe so so these aren't going to go back on um, the other thing is what was probably causing a lot of that if you guys can see that how much that s cans moving and see the slack adjuster moving at the other end the whole bushings are shot like shot shot somebody's just been throwing pads at this thing basically which is you know typical whether it's cars or trucks people love to do that so we're gonna get this cleaned up. Um, I think we're just gonna do a brake job on it right now. We're gonna get this all cleaned up. We're gonna pull it apart. This week I'll get shoes and drums, S-cam bushings, hardware kits. Um, we're gonna pull these Zerks out and, you know, I mean, pull the slack adjusters off. We're gonna replace the cans. When I have this blasted, I can just, you know, put bags over that, protect it, whatever, you know. We'll, we'll, and I may consider, um, I don't really want to go on that trouble though, but I may consider putting the backing plates off the Ford. They're a little rusty though, so I don't know. But anyway, we're going to get to work on that and prep as much as we can this week and finish it next week. All right, so the more I thought about it, we're not just going to do brakes. Well, and if we want to do these S-cam bushings and S-cam, I might just do the entire S-cam. We'll see what kind of wear. With the, with the bushings that worn, it concerns me that we might gonna have a, a ridge on the shaft itself. We'll see. But in order to get those all out, I gotta pull the hubs off anyway. I need to, you know, maybe check seals and check bearings, all that good stuff. So let's just pull the hubs and be done with it. We'll do this entire axle right now. And then it just needs to be cleaned up and painted. Make sense? Does not me. So 
as you saw on the time lapse there, we have got everything off on the brakes. Um, well, I take that back. We don't have the S cam bushings out yet, um, but we'll get them. Uh, and no real major new revelations. Um, probably just gonna clean these slack adjusters up. We're gonna make sure they function right and stuff like that. But I, I think that's the one thing we are gonna reuse. We've got the S cams out here. I don't know if you can see that, but look at that ridge on the bottom side. If you go back to the top side, which I don't have wiped off very well. We've actually got the opposite, sorry. We've got an upper ridge there along that line, which is where that's supposed to ride on the bushing. And when we flip it, as you can see, and I rotate it, it inverts on the bottom edge. So those are junk. That's uh, that's what happens when you don't maintain things. That's okay. This is a cheap axle. And to be honest with you, even if I had found a more expensive cutoff, I probably would have been doing this. So I I'm not, I'm not upset. Um, but this is what happens when you don't maintain stuff. You know, if you were regularly on your brakes, putting bushings in those, those are gonna wear eventually, but but not like that. Those were probably the original, certainly the original S cams. And I'm gonna guess, right, the original S cam bushings, they've probably never been changed from 1984 and 770,000 miles. So, oh well, that's what happens. That's why they're serviceable though. We're gonna put new bushings, new S cams. Um, we've got new, 30-30 brake cans sitting back there, ready to go on. Um, bearings look good. Definitely with more water in these hubs, so we're junking all that gear oil that we put in. Um, it's a good rinse down, I guess. We'll look at it that way. So I've got everything drained out. Hubs are drained. We're gonna have to wipe them out good because um, there was definitely water in them. Um, bearings have just a little bit of, that one actually looks pretty good. Maybe it was the inner, yeah. So just a little bit of flash rust, just on the cage. Um, rollers look good, very little wear. Eh. Um, no heat checking, no blue. So we're gonna clean them up good and uh, we'll run those. Um, let's see what those are. Yeah, those are real Timkins too. Made in the USA, Timkins. Everything's off, everything's out of the way. Next step is I've got to get the um, I've got to get the frame blocked up. We'll probably go right to the the air leaf hangers, get the frame blocked up, and then get the jack underneath the axle, and then we can try to take that gun to the uh, to the U bolts and see what happens. Um, I'm going to try to do that yet today. That way I can uh, um, try to get this axle down, and then you know if it's if it's down and workable, then we'll uh, we'll weld that thing up tomorrow and uh, get the axle put back up. I don't know. I might be wishful thinking. You guys, <laughs> you guys, tell me. Um, but I'm gonna give it a shot. We're gonna see if we can get this done, um, and then we'll get some parts this week. Next weekend, we can put all this back together. Beautiful fresh brakes, good clean fresh fluid, um, and I think we're gonna we're gonna have a nice stop and rear axle. And we don't. Alright, guys. Go. Well, here we go. I played hell getting the far side um, off. This side, you bolt nuts came right off. No big deal. Axle dropped right down. No big deal. Far side, one U bolt nut came off. There are three I had to heat cherry red and then getting the lower perch, that thing. That's the one that came off easy, but getting lower perch required a whole lot of heating as well. But as you can see, the axle's down on the ground. Um, and it's gonna be fun to get back up into place properly, but we'll have to play with some blocking and get that axle or get the jack back underneath the pumpkin and then we can get her up. Um, but as you can see too, I had to pull off the, the S-cam chamber off of this side. Otherwise, I'd never be able to weld that right. Did have one of those bolts snap. I think we're just going to, we'll try to get it out. We'll see. 
I don't have much confidence in that, but we'll see. I might have to weld something else on, but I don't know. She's in there pretty good. At any rate, um, you can see our problem is this. It's supposed to be right there. Um, bunch of the weld materials missing. It's been riding. You can see there where it's all rounded off. It's been riding there on top of the housing. Um, Cause it's not even level. It's supposed to be up like that. And it's been riding down like that. So <coughs> we're gonna have to actually, we'll have to clean that up real good. Do a little fill welding. This one needs to come off. Um, you can see it's cracked down that side. Yeah, light's not letting it in very well, but regardless, we've got some light cracking there. That's got some shitty welds on it. That's been welded. Somebody tried to fix that, so we're going to have our work. You can see where there's see that moisture tracking down. I, I put brake clean on this and heated it, and I can see moisture popping out of that weld. So we got work cut out for us, boys. So we're going to have to grind that off. Then we will um, we'll get it off. Then we weld the other half back on on the bench. Clean the axle up real nice. Weld any cracks I find in the housing. Then re-weld the perch back on. And we'll be in good shape. I bet you we'll have a good chunk of tomorrow into this. I don't see trailer hitch happening. And I don't see a fuel button happening. This is the most important thing here. So, But luckily, I mean, it went kind of the way we wanted it. Um, don't have to replace U-bolts, so that's that's a plus. You can see how I got this working here. I got I got the suspension chained up around the frame. So, so we'll. Uh, I think this right here is exactly how we're gonna gonna work on this thing. It's about as good a position as I can get. So, um, yeah. Tomorrow's cutting welding day. We'll see how this goes. Get this puppy sealed back up and properly fixed and zip back into place and then we are ready for um for the brake and bearing job next weekend and get her on the road all right so i'll show you guys a couple things before i get into the meat of it so i've got the um the second half of this perch cut off of the axle and i've got it all prepped for welding um you can see this thing was major this thing has been broke for a long long time um, you know, you look at that deformation right there where it had been riding at different points. And, you know, part of that's just how the welds broke when they did, when they let go. But, um, what I found though was cracking in here. You can see where I've got a bevel out right there. Um, and beveled on the inside. Same thing on this opposite side. This was the piece that was broke free. Um, so we beveled that out. It's right at that hinge of the 90 is where it's so we're going to stiffen that up this side had just on the one side um had a crack going right there i could not get my grinding wheel on the inside so i beveled this extra deep near essentially all the way through you can see where it blued right there so we're just going to fill that whole thing um so the plan is i'm going to get this welded back together So it's, you know, we're, we're, we'll place it up a little better with some magnets and stuff, but we'll get this welded. Well, first I'm going to tack it, then I'm going to take it over there to the axle and make sure it fits right um, around the axle housing, and then we'll finish welding this. Once this is together and it's back to one piece, then, um, and the fill welding's done, then I'm probably going to have to bevel out along each side in preparation for welding back to the axle. So outside only obviously i'm not going to be able to weld on the inside of that so so anyway I'll show you what i found on the axle once i cleaned it up this thing is way worse than i uh, even thought to be honest with you in a perfect world this was if this was for commercial use this this housing's junk um because of what i'm using it for and because of my budget i'm gonna fix this but this should be a new housing like hands down but anyway you can see i've taken a my pencil and mark the cracks out once I clean this all up. Um, scrubbed it with some diesel and then, uh, and then parts cleaner. But you can see, I can hold the camera right. 
the crack starts here. This is the one I knew was here. Starts here, goes below where that weld was, comes over to there, and then it jumps up. And it's got a curvature and it ends right there. It's also got a secondary crack. And actually, I think I missed part of it. Yep, there's a little bit. There's a little bit right there that I didn't mark. It jumps up and comes across the weld and dies out right about there. So that's all got to get fixed. And then there's a crack on the backside as well, guys. We've got starts up here, or same thing around the weld comes up and dies out over there. So um, again, for commercial duty, this whole, you know, this whole piece is about to crack out, but for what we're going to do with it and the loads we're going to put onto it and the amount of miles we're going to put on it, it is not worth the cost of changing out this housing time and dollars. So we got it this far. We're going to, um, we're going to weld it up. So once I get that perch welded in back to one piece, make sure it fits, then we'll come along and grind, bevel out the welds all the way around, remove and or bevel out, and we'll bevel out for our repair welds and get that all done, um, smooth those down as needed, probably not much, this isn't a visual thing, and then we can set that perch and um, I think I'm going to do some fill welding actually on that perch um, in spots where it had rubbed down so much from riding like this over the years. So, you know, I'm going to guess this thing had, they were filling this with fluid on the constant and letting water in constantly. I mean, they, I think this went on for years. So I, I would get you this is, this is probably 50,000 miles is my, my guess. And, you know, it had to be a made, it would, you know, any mechanic would look at this and figure out that it is a major repair. You know, there's no way to, you're either going to do it this way or you're going to change a housing out. So, you know, they probably knew it was a cracked axle and just said, hey, this is a, you know, this is a, it was plated as an RV and it was probably pulling a race trailer or whatever because it had a race race company name on the door of the Peterbilt. So they probably just said, fuck it, we're just going to, uh, you know, pour fluid into this thing and keep her going. So anyway, we'll get it fixed now. We're going to do it right. Um, I also have went through this morning while I was letting the barn warm up and I've got my list. Got some, huh, got some grinding debris on it. So this is all my parts, um, part numbers, researched all my numbers, my um, uh, measurements and all that. So this is 100% brake seals. Um, we're replacing the, the, I think I said that previously, but we're going to replace the S cams completely because how worn they are. I'm going to replace the slack adjusters. There's no reason to waste time cleaning those up for a $15 part. That's a, that's a waste of my time. It's not worth it. Plus they're old. So um, we're going to stick with manual slack adjusters. I prefer manual, especially in this kind of situation. Something I'm going to be driving a lot. Great. Don't need it. But but yeah, we're going to we're going to run manuals again, just like that. Um, we're going to get the kits. So all of our washers and bushings and all that good stuff. Um, and um, we're gonna get, while we're at it, I've got one stud that I think I screwed it up. But as you can see, that's not very usable. So we're gonna replace that stud. Those we can reuse when we go to aluminum outers, um, but we need to replace these. So I'm just gonna get these new ones while I'm at it. Um, and I've got the measurements, and I think the part number for that as well. And then I transferred my list from last week of all the airline fittings and stuff we need, because the more I look at this, I don't think there's any reason to sandblast this, to be honest with you. You know, we've got a little bit of scrubby frame through here. It's not horrible. There's still paint on it. Um, I think what little bit of blasting needs to be done, I'm just going to do it home with my, my little blaster back there. I'm going to regret that because I hate blasting, but and we're not going to do the whole thing. We're just going to do what needs it. This, this Peterbilt back here is fine. It's got good paint on it. So we're going to um, come when it warms up, we get a warm weekend or whatever. I'm going to bring my power washer from the shop home. Um, it's a big 220 electric unit with a burner, um, the diesel burner on it. And we're gonna, it's actually also gonna be a great way to burn up some of this junk diesel in these tanks, now that I think about it. Um, but we're gonna, uh, we're gonna hot water power wash the heck out of this whole thing and, and call it good, you know? Then it's ready for paint, primer and paint, whatever you wanna call it. There's just no reason to, to go to the expense of blasting. Um, 
and I can get all this nasty grease and stuff off and whatnot. And what that also means is that I can just run my airlines and my wiring right now and be done with it. So I'm going to go ahead and get those fittings this coming week. That way I can just get this all loomed up and tied up and put where it belongs and looking nice um, and, and be done. Uh, I think the only thing I'll have left to still get for this rear end is the shocks. And, I, you know, I'm assuming they're bad, but they're not leaking, to be honest with you. So it might be all right. I think we're going to leave those be for the time being. We got we to gotta, we gotta stop spending money at some point. Right, boys? So anyway, long story short, but I'm going to get into uh, that perch and this, and I'll bring you back when we got a little All right, guys. Well, well, this first, so this has been an hour or two or whatever it's been. Long time. So that's all set. Um, I should say it's set. I might have to fill weld. We'll find that out right now. And the axle's welded. Um, more cracks showed their face. Not much. I had a little, that little guy right there, that little tail, show up. Because you can see the, you know, the moisture pushing through as you heat and weld the rest. And then I had some... Let's get over here on my creeper. I had some moisture show up, right? there along the top of the old perch weld and you know i don't know if it was you know it was just bubbling up. it might have just been moisture that was down in because there was kind of a crack there or a or a um you know a spot where moisture could sit and i probably didn't get it all heated out but i don't know i welded the son of a bitch anyway um you know, I just tried to extend well past where I, my known cracks were. Um, so anyway, I'm just wondering if I should do a little bit right there on that old factory weld. I think I'm gonna just just to be sure, because some of those that wanted to crack along that line, you know, just had spots where it was clearly was prone. So anyway, short of that, which that could be done after as we're welding this on. So, yeah, that's a pretty nice fit. The question really, okay, I see why. That's a pretty good fit, boys. I'm not gonna complain too much about that. The trick is gonna be getting it lined up back to where it should have been. So, you know, we've got stuff we got to line up. But the nice thing is, is we can take a measurement off the other side and from the edge of the plate to the edge of the brake, um, the retainer, whatever you want to call that. So we can get a nice exact measurement and uh, get that thing tacked and welded in. I got to tell I got to do a little bit more grinding. Well, maybe, unless it's supposed to be back over a little bit. We might have to do some grinding and prep and then we can uh, weld that thing in. And then it's time to put this back together. All right, we got it all welded in. Man, just bead after bead after bead to get this thing to where I'm comfortable with it. But I think it's structurally sound, but, um, you know, don't look at those ones on the bottom and the side as much. Although they didn't turn out half bad, but that's some serious out of position welding there. Come around. This was the worst side down there. Although, it, again, not bad. Decent puddle still. Um, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of welding. But I'm pretty confident that that's going to hold up to what I need to throw at it. Which means it is time to try to get this axle hung back in the, um, in the suspension and get it bolted up and torque down and then we are um, then we're ready to uh, see if we've got any time to mess with anything else. I got a I got a rib roast I'm cooking tonight. Pretty excited about that. Um, so I got it I got it sitting and uh, coming up to room temp right now so around about um, 4 30 I gotta be in the house and so I get that bad boy in the oven and cooking down and it's yeah, gonna be one heck of a sunday sunday dinner folks so anyway i'm gonna get to work on this but i, I mean i'm pretty confident i don't think we're gonna have leaks but famous last words right 
at the very least, if it sucker leaks, God, it's going to be so minor. But but I, I think we got it. And I think that perch is nice and strong. The other side looks great. Welds look good, great still over there. So, you know, and I welded more than what the factory did. Um, the factory really just welded here and here. All the way around and weld that bottom when I did. So, and if anything, that, that the additional welding on that perch is what's going to strengthen up, you know, where it had some cracking going on too. So, so I think we're, I think we're in good shape here, but we'll see. Um, back at you here in a little bit. Success. All right, it's back in. Um, everything lined up. The, uh, had to, you know, do a little persuasion. On the u bolts going to squeeze in and drop into those, uh, as usual, you know, to drop into the, the lower U-bolt mounts. But, you know, it lined up right the way it should. Uh, that that Milwaukee three-quarter inch gun is the coolest thing in the world. I love this thing. I cleaned it up a little bit, wiped it down. Um, obviously, I'm using the crap out of it already. But, man, just a lifesaver. But anyway, we got it back on, you know, jack stands under the axle. I shot some paint on that before I put it up in, um, well, that bare metal. And everything's torqued down, good to go. We'll put some fluid in it next weekend and see how it goes. As you can see, I've got my, not going to get to any actual fabrication on the hitch, but I had a few minutes before I need to head inside and thought I'd at least get stuff placed. So I pulled off, these were the brackets that were sitting right like that. Um, you know, I think, I think those are old mud flat mounts. Um, you know, and obviously we're using the ones we've already got the holes for what was actually on here. You know, we've got those holes on each side that mount the, the spring loaded. I'm going to have lights in them is how I'm going to run it. So I, we don't need those. We'll just use this as the sandwich plate that those basically were. Um, but basically there's one, two, three bolts here plus my two where the uh the mud flap hangers will eventually bolt through i'm gonna so first order of business is when i um start on this next weekend is we will get the pulleys off get the holes drilled um on the drill press and then we'll put it back up and we'll bolt those in place back again um then at that point, once I'm happy that everything's square, then we'll take our two by eight tube and sandwich it between those, clamp everything together, and at least tack those into place. Then we can unbolt everything. We'll full weld the crossbars. At that point, then we'll weld on our, um, our D-rings and our hitch tube so everything's square and nice and neat and clean and good, no out of position welding. And once that's all done, then we can, you know, take floor jack or whatever, put the whole thing back up in place, re-bolt it on, re-square everything, make sure it's all perfect, and then we can weld to the frame as well as the bolts. Uh, once it's all said and done, I'll pull the clamps and everything, and we'll take the torches and cut these angles down. And then it'll be done. And that'll be our, our hitch. So then we'll have fifth wheel, Oh, and then goose ball. You know, obviously, we're going to have those plates right here. And what I decided to do to keep life simple, I've got this thing um, from my old pickup that had just the fifth wheel rails in it. And so I bought this so I could um, pull a gooseneck trailer. And I think that is going to work pretty schnazzy. Um, we'll be able to weld that to across those bars. And it's going to take some cutting on it and I'm sure we'll have to torch it a little bit and whatnot, but I'm picturing that, you know, crossways right here. We may not have to cut anything, hard to say, but crossways right here welded right to those, those crossbars, um, which I got to measure, but I think that's going to put us down at the height we want um, you know, worst case, if I got to build it up with some steel, we will, or if I got to just look at doing something a little different, great, but I got that. It's never going to use for anything else. So why not put it to work? At any rate, there we go. Another successful weekend. A lot of it doing stuff that I wish I didn't have to do, but I'm going to be really excited to have the 
these hubs and brakes all proper and the way they should. Don't got to worry about it. Hitch will be done. I think we can get all that stuff easily done next weekend um, and basically have the rear end complete. And I shouldn't say easily, but we should be able to get it done next weekend. And uh, then we will uh, we'll move on to the front axle. I do have some trailer work I'm going to do in here. Um, so that'll be nice to be able to get this thing pulled out. And it'll probably time out perfect. It'll be the week after next um, when I need to get a trailer in here for a couple days during the week. Do some stuff for work. And then, uh, um, then you know, we'll be back in with the, with the L9000 and plugging away on the front axle. Um, I'm also going to order, i got to add that to my list, but I'm going to order, uh, I'm going to get the bags for the front this week. So I've got them and, uh, well, maybe I won't get them this week. I don't know. We'll see. But, uh, regardless, I'm going to get them in the next week or two so that when I go to start working on that, I've got the bags. So obviously you can't really start without that. So then I can start fabricating my, uh, you know, my, my spring perch and pulling leaves out of the front axle and all that good stuff. But get that all squared away. So here we go. Thanks for watching everybody. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, and again, I would also appreciate it if you liked and subscribed, if you're watching and you want to see more of it. it means a lot to me. Have a great week.